VISCA stands for Value Sensitive Conversational Agents. Conversational agents are technologies like chatbots or voice assistants like Siri or Alexa. And the idea is that the framework helps teams to build conversational agents that are better aligned with their users and stakeholders' human values. These values can be things like privacy or security, but they can also be things like connectedness or independence or much more personal values that are traditionally quite difficult to define and embed in tech. Um, and so the idea is that the framework streamlines this process and makes it not only possible to do so, but also practical. Uh, so it also comes with this toolkit that um, gives teams building conversational agents different tools and activities that they can carry out with different stakeholders uh, to really get them to consider values at different stages of the design process and understand how to very concretely and practically embed those values into the conversational agent. I'd say the framework is special in that it really tries to balance between the values of your technical team, so developers, data scientists, the design team of you know, conversation design, interface, UX, and the users and other stakeholders and to really kind of elevate and equate all these different values and integrate them meaningfully throughout the design process. Uh, so it's really about giving um, technical practitioners the means to be willing and able to consider these values every step of the way and then to also give them outcomes that they're able to then integrate into their workflows and have uh, them drive implementation. Uh, and then on the other hand of things, also giving all these kind of non-technical uh, stakeholders the ability to contribute meaningfully and have their voices be heard as well. So I did computer engineering for my undergrad and at the time there was a very strong emphasis and culture on really just focusing on getting the code to work, uh, improving accuracies, optimizing all these different technical metrics and I would always be the one on the team who would say you know why don't we build an interface for this or why don't we sit someone in front of this program and see if they can actually use it um, and I think I realized very early on that there were so many different socio-technical considerations um, beyond just does the thing work, which is obviously critical, but it's not the only thing to keep in mind when you're building tech. And this eventually led me to do a master's degree in human computer interaction and then a PhD in design engineering. And one of the things I've kept very close to my heart when I was building the framework was again this idea of closing the gap between um, stakeholders and users and their values and experiences and technical professionals' capabilities and urge to build all these cool, amazing things uh, and trying to kind of find the common ground between both in the context of conversational agents. As I was developing the framework, uh, I spoke to a lot of professionals in the space. I did a lot of literature reviews, read a lot of articles. And one idea that was coming up again and again was this distinction between best practices or what people should be doing and reality or what people are actually doing. And one of the things that I've really worked on with the framework is to try and close this gap as much as possible and bring best practices closer to practitioners reality. Uh, so it's very much about making uh, practitioners more willing and more able to kind of incorporate these different values uh, into their workflows and into the tech they're building. So with all that in mind, uh, I think my dream for the framework would be that it actually helps professionals of any kind working in this space of conversational agents to work more closely with these values, consider them more often and embed them into the tech they're building. Uh, and that we see more human-centered and value-sensitive conversational agents out there.